we were away in northern Arizona. What are you listening to? This is a good question because there are so many voices all speaking at the same time. More than one voice speaking at the same time creates confusion, especially if the two voices are saying two opposing things, okay? So many voices. There's a voice in your head that is speaking to you all the time about every single thing. It is almost impossible to silence that voice. So you're listening to that, but then you're also listening to the voice of the people around you. And then, like Simon was talking about, you're listening to the voice in the songs that people are singing when it gets stuck in your head. You're just like repeating that thing over and over. And then there's the voices of social media. Facebook has a voice. Instagram, they all have different voices. And then there's the voice of God. What are you listening to? This question is important because who or whatever you listen to or obey is your master, according to the scriptures. Now watch this. We're going to take a look at that same scripture, Mark chapter 4. We're going to start just a little bit earlier. Give me verse 22. The scripture says, for there is nothing hid which shall not be, what's that word? manifested. That's going to be our key word. We're going to come back to that and the whole thing is going to snap together because of the manifesting of the thing that is hid. To manifest means to be made known, to be seen clearly, to be brought into existence. For there is nothing hid which shall not be manifested. Neither was anything kept secret, but that it should come abroad. So this is the interesting thing. The Most High God, He doesn't have secrets. There are secret things, but He reveals them in His Word. The only thing that makes it a secret, it's not that it can't be known, it's that you don't know it. <laughs> right? The secret things belong to Him, but we have the honor of searching those things out so that they can be known. Now give me verse 23. The scripture says, if any man have, what's this thing on the side of my head? If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. See, some people's ears, they're just for holding on their glasses. They don't use them to listen, right? They only have them on their head because they'd look funny without them. But we need to be the tribe of people that have ears specifically for the purpose of hearing. And what is it that you should be hearing? The voice of God. Okay. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. Verse 24. And he said unto them, take heed what ye hear. You can't just be listening to everything because as I explained from the beginning, if two people are telling you two different things at the same time, you're going to be confused. That is what confusion is. So he says, take heed what ye hear. That's the first part. And then he puts a colon. And then this next part is going to begin talking about judgment because it's very difficult for you to judge the truth when you're hearing two different stories, right? So this is weird because we went away to camp and as they were reading from the Bible, they're reading a totally different version of the Bible. So I'm hearing a totally different voice and I don't recognize that voice. They're reading from some, I don't know, NLT, BLT, ABCD. I don't know what it was. It was crazy, but I didn't recognize the voice of it. But Christ says his sheep, what? They hear his voice. They know his voice. So when they were reading this stuff, I was like, this is, this is a confusion to me. I don't understand what that is. Now watch what the scripture says. With what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you. That means whatever it is that you use to make a measurement, you will be judged by the same measurement. Okay? And unto you that hear shall more be given. More what? Give me more. I'm always into more. Unto you that hear wisdom shall more wisdom be given. Does that make sense? If you hear the words of wisdom, but you don't understand them, you don't receive them, you don't apply them to your life, more is not going to be given to you. <laughs> you didn't do anything with what you had. Unto you that hear the truth, what do you get? more truth. Okay, but watch this. Unto those that hear lies, 
What's the more that's given to them? More lies. They show up every Sunday and get lied to. More and more lies because they have not yet made a distinction. They have not yet said, I have to break free from the lies so that I can get more truth in my life. Give me verse 25. It says, for he that hath to him shall be given. And he that hath not from him shall be taken even that which he hath. So you better have some, because if you don't have any, even the what you don't have what is going to be taken away from you. This works with wisdom. This works with grace. This works with anything. If you have some, you get more. If you don't have any, the little bit that you did have that you didn't appreciate gets taken away from you. That's what that scripture means. So once again, who are you listening to? Some people are listening to their pastor. I'm listening to the voice of God. Hopefully you guys are listening to the voice of God. Watch this. Many people come here into our church and they hear the truth. Like, it's the craziest thing. Remember when we were doing the revelations breakdown? The amount of people that would be falling asleep in their seats as we are revealing the mark of the beast, who the Antichrist is, when this whole thing is going to take place. We were breaking down so many things. People were just like nodding off. And then we would get to certain messages and literally I would explain and show from the scriptures who the children of Israel are, who the Antichrist is himself, what the abomination of desolation is going to be. And I'd get off the stage and go to talk to people and they're making jokes. It's like, wait, what were you just listening to? We just explained some of the most important things that are ever going to happen in your life. And I get off the stage and you're telling me what your pastor said this morning and what your pastor said this morning wasn't even true <laughs> that used to happen to me on a regular basis because we had people that were coming here and also going somewhere else you know what that is confusion if you were one of those people and you are in the room or you are watching us online let me explain how this works in the Bible which is what we preach we teach that the law and the testimony are the keys to get into the kingdom of heaven. You must keep the law and you must have the testimony of Jesus Christ. We preach that every service, every message. Now, in the other church that you're going to, they preach to you that the law is done away with and you are saved right now and you cannot lose your salvation because you are saved by grace. Those are two opposing messages. One of them cancels out the other one. It's very difficult if you're coming here and you're hearing, not just hearing, but you're reading it for yourself. Like you come in here and you read it on the screen. Nobody can ever say, well, the pastor at that church said, because I didn't say anything because there's a screen for each one of your eyeballs <laughs> so that you can see it for yourself. Now watch this. You see it and you read it here and then you go somewhere else and you hear the opposite of it and that is confusion who's the author of that Satan is the author of that because the scripture says God is not the author of confusion but peace as in all churches of the Saints so if we are Saints in here if we are planning to be ruling with Christ in the kingdom then we have to be keeping this word we have to be not confused. We have to remove the confusion from every possible situation. How can you, this is, this, is, this is weird for me. How can you hear the truth, read your exact purpose, the reason what you were created for in the Bible, find your identity. You're like, I thought I was this and now I'm that. And then just walk away from the whole thing and be like, yeah, I'll be okay. I'm just going to go somewhere else. That's weird. Give me 1 John chapter 2, verse 19. 1 John chapter 2, verse 19. Scripture says, they went out from us, but they were not of us. See, there's some people, and we've all witnessed it. Everybody here has witnessed it that come and they hang out but they're just here to spy out our freedom as the scripture says they're not actually concerned with learning the law statutes and commandments the testimony they don't care about that they just want to find out what is it that you guys believe over there you guys are so different see they went out from us but they were 
For if they had been of us, they would no doubt, what would they have done? Continued with us. But they went out that they might be made, what's that word? Manifest that they were not all of us. See, there's nothing hidden that doesn't get revealed by the Most High. I don't have to put people on blast or bring anything out, right? Because whatever measurement I use to judge, it's going to get measured back to me. That's what the scripture says. But there's nothing hidden. So anything that appears to be hidden, it will get revealed in time. It will be made manifest. Because the scripture talks about the light and whatever makes manifest is light so it just trips me out like how can somebody go back to a life of lies once you know the truth that's weird you're like i have seen heard and experienced the truth but i enjoy being lied to because the music is good <laughs> music is good and I, okay i'm gonna listen to music for 30 minutes and then you, you get up here and you talk to me for 45 minutes and you tell me lies and i'm coming back next week i don't understand how people can do that and our church struggles because of this exact thing. Because Israel, whether it be spiritual Israel or physical Israel, they're not dedicated to the truth. They're not dedicated to the Most High. Like, I, when I think of dedicated, I think of Simon. Because Simon is extremely dedicated. I remember the first thing that he did when I knew he was dedicated, it was right around Christmas time. And he had a Christmas tree up in his house literally all year long. And we had one conversation where we broke down the scriptures and he went home and threw that Christmas tree away. And I was like, wow, that's really dedicated. Because most people will be like, uh, I'll get rid of it after Christmas. See, that's the difference. When you hear the truth and you apply it to your life, instantly at that time, you don't make any tarrying to turn to the Lord. That's dedication. That shows commitment. But when you're like, oh, I'm tired. I know it's the Sabbath, but you know what? Next week on Friday is going to be the Sabbath. Too. I don't think I'm going to come to church this week because I'm tired. What if God just got tired of you, right? Like you're tired of meeting up with him. What if he got tired of meeting up with you? We don't think about things like that, right? Watch this. Give me 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 31. I want to talk about the second part of that scripture where it says, For with, with what measure ye need, it shall be measured to you. That's the scripture talking about judging. And here in 1 Corinthians, it says, For if we would judge who? Ourselves. We should not be judged. If I judged myself, there would be no reason for you to judge me. Why? I'm already taking care of it. You'd be like, hey, brother, I, I, I see that you got something in your eye. And I'm like, no, I'm already taking care of it. I'm not trying to get you to take the thing out of your eye. And I'm looking past the thing that's in my eye. I'm judging myself. Therefore, I don't need you to judge me. Give me Romans chapter 2, verse 1. Because that second part, you have to see how he tied the thing together. He said, there's nothing hidden that shall not be made manifest. For with whatever, let me explain that, with whatever measure ye meet part. Whatever measurement you use to judge somebody else, the only way you're able to do that is because you know the judgment that comes. So if I say to anybody, you're a sinner and you're going to, you're going to hell, whatever judgment it is that I'm using to make that determination, if I'm doing the same thing that they're doing, I'm going to the same place they're going. Does that make sense? Okay, Romans chapter 2 verse 1, the scripture says, therefore, therefore means for that reason, therefore thou art inexcusable. Inexcusable means you are without excuse, O man, whosoever thou art that judgest. For wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself, for thou that judgest doest the same thing. That's what that means. Man, the only way you get to be a judge is by knowing the law. But if you're breaking the law that you are a judge of, you are going to the same place. You are condemning yourself. Give me verse 2. It says, But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth 
against them which commit such things. What are we sure of? Okay, so this is the interesting part. We are sure that the judgment is according to truth. What's truth? The law, Jesus, the word of God. The judgment is according to the testimony, to the law, to the word of God. Is it for them or against them? It's against them which commit such things. I'm sure of that. These people that are not sure of that, those are the ones who say, oh, I'm tired. I'm just going to stay at home. I don't, I don't need to hear from God today. Yeah, I'm just going to push that off until tomorrow, and I'll make an appointment to hear from God tomorrow. And you guys know what happens when tomorrow rolls around, right? They say, you know what? I don't need to hear from God today. I'm good. I'm going to hear from God tomorrow. And they put it off from day to day. When you put off meeting with God from day to day, uh, that's like, how can I compare that? That's like, there's like, uh, there's a blessing and he has it behind his back and he's just ready to give it to you. But you keep delaying further and further receiving the blessing that he's planning to give to you. You keep pushing it off to the point where he's like, I'm just going to put it on the shelf. And when, when I see you, I see you. When you show up, then I'll give you that blessing. And I'm not saying that you can't be blessed without showing up. I'm saying when you show up, you should expect to be blessed. But most people, they, they don't. I'm like, oh, I expect that. Well, it's two o'clock in the afternoon right now, but I expect that five hours from now, I'm going to be too tired to go meet with the Lord. <laughs> That's weird. All right, watch this. Give me verse three. It says, And thinkest thou this, O man, that judgest them which do such things, and doest the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? Yeah. They do think those things. There's some people who come to our church and they only show up so that they can get answers so that they can go and answer other people's questions. Now that one's really weird to me. Like they'll show up to the Bible study and they'll write down a gang of notes and then we won't see them again for a month. And when they come back in a month, they'll tell us all the stories about all the conversations and arguments they got into that they could not get themselves out of because they don't show up to get fed on a regular basis. They only show up so that they can get ammunition for the arguments that they're getting into. That's interesting. Give me Luke chapter 18, verse 16. I want to show you the same story that we just heard where Christ was explaining about being careful about the judgment that you give and how nothing is hidden. But he rewords the entire story. Luke chapter 18, verse 16, it says, No man, what? Luke chapter 16, verse, my bad, 16, Luke chapter 8, verse 16. Yeah, yeah. No man, when he hath lighted a candle, covereth it with the vessel. Or, why is he talking about putting it under a bed? That's what you should be thinking right there when you get to that semicolon. You're like, that would burn down the whole house, starting with the place where I'm doing the most rest. Oh, you want to sleep? You got a candle lit and you're going to put it under your bed? You're not going to be doing much resting. No man, when he hath lighted a candle, covereth it with the vessel or putteth it under a bed, but setteth it on a candlestick that they which enter in may see the light. So that's like, I want you guys to refer to that that uh, lighting a candle as being your Bible. No man who starts to get the wisdom and understanding out of this Bible decides that, you know what, I'm gonna leave that in the back seat of my car. <laughs> we don't do that. This is the most precious thing. Like, nope, you can't borrow it, you can't read it, you can't touch it, don't even breathe close to it, right? I'm not gonna leave it in my car, I'm not gonna leave it at home. If I left it at home, I'm gonna go back home and get it. If I leave my phone there, you guys will go back home for your phone, right? Skirt, turn around, I can't live without my phone. I gotta make sure I got my phone. I don't need my phone. Ain't nobody calling but with problems. I need to be able to supply some answers, so I'm gonna go back and get my Bible, right? <laughs> no, you know what, let's just slide that Bible under the bed. What are you doing putting your Bible under the bed? 
You put it on a candlestick. So in your house, that would basically be like a table in the living room so that you can always see it there and the house can be built on that word. It says that they which enter in may see the light. Now watch, give me verse 17. For nothing is secret. That sounds familiar. That shall not be made. What's that word? Manifest. Neither anything hid that shall not be known and come abroad. That means it's possible to know everything that you desire to know. Who are you going to ask? Google? You need to ask the Most High. The scripture says, if any of you lack wisdom, who do you ask? Alexa, that's right. No, you ask, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God to get, who giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not. Okay, so watch this. If it can be known, you're going to know it through the knowledge of God. Now, verse 18. Take heed, therefore, how ye hear. What's the difference between this one and the last one that we... Remember, these are the same story, but he's using different words. What did he say here? He said, take heed how you hear. What did he say in the last one? Take heed what you hear. Take heed means to be careful. He's like, be careful what you hear. But here he's saying, be careful how you hear it. Because as Simon was explaining, sometimes people who love lies will speak just a little bit of truth. And what does that create? confusion but God is not the author of confusion if what you are hearing though it may be from a guy with a suit and a tie and he's standing at the podium and he's saying Jesus 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 he's got so many Jesus's that doesn't mean that he's speaking the truth to the law and to the testimony if they speak not according to this word what it is because there is no light in them Okay, so for that reason, the scripture says, take heed, therefore, how ye hear. For whosoever hath to him shall be given. And whosoever hath not from him shall be taken away, even which he seemeth to have. Man, I, th I thought that dude had a lot of wisdom. How is it possible that he's down there in the lake of fire? <laughs> I thought he had a gang of wisdom. No, the wisdom that you had was worldly. It wasn't biblical wisdom. Biblical wisdom only comes from the Holy Ghost and from the revelation through the precepts. Right? It does not come. I don't care how many years you spend in cemetery, seminary, um, just like trying to get a degree. It doesn't matter if you don't have the Holy Ghost. It doesn't matter if you don't understand the precepts. All you're doing is wasting a lot of money and a lot of time. All right? Take heed, therefore, how ye hear. How did you hear that? That's what I usually be like, so where'd you get that from? That's what I ask people when they ask me, where'd you get that question from? That's weird. Take heed, therefore, how ye hear. Make sure you're hearing the right thing from the right source. Hmm. Give me 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 5. The scripture is talking about judging. Before we go into that scripture, let me explain how this usually works. You guys heard of this thing called gossip? Gossip is when one person tells you something whether it's true or not, and you believe that thing without checking the facts. You have not checked the facts. So I want you to imagine that someone comes along and they tell you something about somebody else and it is completely out of that person's character. You're like, uh-uh, no, there's no way that person did that. And then you're like, oh, well, maybe they did. I don't know, you believe it. And then you start to treat that person differently. You're not judging righteous judgment. You're judging according to the appearance. You're judging by what you heard. Is that the right way that we're supposed to judge stuff? No. So we don't judge that way. We don't judge according to the appearance. We judge righteous judgment. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 5, the scripture says, Therefore, judge nothing before the time. What's the time? What's the time? The time of judgment. 
you are not the judge. <laughs> you are not the judge. Therefore, you don't get to judge anything before the time. And then it tells you when the time is. See there's how there's a comma? Therefore, judge nothing before the time. And you say, when's the time? And it says, until the Lord comes. Oh, okay, now I know the time. Who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make, there's that word again, and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts. And then shall every man have praise of God. So I'm not supposed to be judging you. You're not supposed to be judging me. I'm supposed to be judging according to the scriptures. I don't get to judge according to my opinion. You don't get to judge according to your opinion because that creates confusion. What if everything you heard was just a bunch of judgment? People's opinions. You guys know, that's what, have you ever heard this word? People are like, oh, he's very judgmental. You know that word, right? Oh, he's very judgmental. That doesn't even mean anything very judgmental. What does that mean? Therefore judge nothing before the time. There is a time coming when you will get to judge everything. The scripture says, know ye not that we shall judge angels. How much more the things pertaining to this life. But if, so there's coming a time when you're going to get to judge everything, including the angels that have fallen. Now is not yet that time. Right now, you are in a time where you are submitting yourself to the judgment, laws, statutes, and judgments of the Most High God. And He will bring the hidden things to light. He will make manifest the counsel of the hearts. When that happens, every man will be able to stand according to what he has said and what he has done. That's when we receive our reward or our punishment according to that. So we need to be careful what we are hearing so that we are not being confused. You know how easy it is for somebody to say one thing and you don't understand that one thing and it throws off everything that you've been building up, everything that you've been learning? One thing. I remember we had a, a member of our church <clears throat> She was a member for a while and she was learning and she had just gotten to the point where she understood that there was more than one law. And now all of her questions are about the law and she's got notes and she's learning that there is more than one law. And then she went to another church and they had one of those services, you know, the kind where people roll on the ground and they speak in gibberish. She went to one of those and heard the exact opposite and that was her last day in our church. She, she came back, she told us, she went to that thing, she did all of that stuff, and that was it. She didn't believe in the law, she didn't believe in the testimony. Wow. See, a little leaven, what does it do? Leavens the whole lump. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. So be careful, not only what you hear, but how you hear, and make sure it is according to the word of God. And with whatever you use to judge, know in advance that you will be judged by the same thing that you are using. Amen? This is the message that we have for tonight.